children think that if they can't be found, then they can't get in trouble. It was her eighth birthday. And she sat in the laundry room while her father carefully ironed her new birthday dress for the party to which she was going. While her mother worked on getting the food ready, for the guests were soon to arrive. And while her father ironed her dress, she chatted on in great excitement about all the people who were coming and her friends who would be there and who her best friends were and who she hoped most of all would come and what they would bring her as presents. And then the phone rang in the hallway. And so uh, her father said, now stay here and remember, don't touch the iron, it's hot but I have to go get the phone in case someone is lost on the way to the party. So her dad ran down the hallway, and more out of curiosity than an act of outright disobedience, she thought, and then she reached up and touched her finger to the iron. And immediately she screamed out in pain and started crying, but rather than running down to the hall to her dad, she ran up to her room and hid in the closet. Because if she went to him, then he would know what she had done and that she had not listened to him, that she had disobeyed him. Now, a couple minutes later, she heard her father calling for her. She stayed in her hiding place. And a moment later, he opened the closet door. There you are, he said. And as soon as he saw her tears, he knew what she had done. But to her surprise, he didn't yell at her. He didn't scold her. Instead, he kneeled down before her, picked her up, and rocked her until she stopped crying. When she was able to speak again, she said, Dad, aren't you mad at me? And he said, Yes, I am mad that you didn't listen. And because you didn't listen to what I said and you didn't trust what I told you, you got hurt. She bit her lip and then said, Are, Am I going to get punished? And he said, no, the iron is consequence enough. I came so you wouldn't miss out on the cake and the ice cream. Now come on and let's go to the party. And hand in hand, they went downstairs to her birthday party. Adam and Eve also thought that if they hid, after discovering that they were naked, that if they made clothes for themselves, and if they hid, then they wouldn't be punished. Well, they discovered, and we don't read this today, but in the rest of chapter 3 of Genesis, all the consequences that they brought upon themselves are laid out. How there is division between them. Division between them and God. Division between them and uh, nature. And that they will have to struggle and toil with animals and with the earth to live. And so they bring about their own consequences. But the real tragedy of the story of Adam and Eve is that they hide. They hide from God. That God had come to them every evening to walk with them in the garden. And instead of eagerly waiting for God to arrive, instead they go and they hide. And that is a tragedy, that they deprive themselves of the joy of being with God of the joy of the intimacy of walking with him and sharing with him about their day. Now, we can look at Adam and Eve and scoff and click our tongues and say, ah, oh, how foolish, how silly they are. We can think that we have advanced so much as human beings or as a society from them and how primitive they are. But no, the story of Adam and Eve is our story. Now, we also think that if we can hide from God, then we won't get punished, or God won't recognize our sin, or we won't endure any consequences. Now, we don't hide in bushes, for we generally believe that God sees all and knows all, but we hide in different ways. We hide by lying to ourselves. We think that or we deny that we have ever done anything wrong, or in situations that anything is our fault. We deny that we have any culpability or any responsibility, and so we seek to hide. We hide by blaming others. 
pointing the finger at them, saying it's all their fault, pointing our fingers at Satan, saying that the devil made us do it, pointing our fingers at God, just as Adam and Eve do, that Adam says, it's you, the woman that you gave me made me eat. So we blame God and say, if you wouldn't have put me in that situation, I never would have done what I did. We hide also by trying to justify ourselves, saying, if God must see how hard I'm trying, if only God sees how difficult the circumstances, how impossible the situation, how hard I've been trying to be righteous, well, then surely God wouldn't deny me. And we don't sew for ourselves fig leaves or hide behind clothes. Oh, but we do sew for ourselves a beautiful fabric, not only of lives, but of our accomplishments, so that we can show others how great we are and how good we are. And we sew together a long list of good things that we have done, thinking that if God sees how well put together we are and our good intentions and all of our good deeds, then surely we won't be punished. But true knowledge, true wisdom of good and evil comes not from a tree, but from the word of God. And today the word of God exposes us all. Today the word of God shows us that it is useless to string together good at works or at list of accomplishments or good intentions. That it is useless to do so for nothing can measure up to God's standards. Today, the word of God exposes that it is useless to lie to ourselves, that, they do, that those lies do not give us cover, for Jesus is truth, and he sees all and knows all. Today, the word of God exposes that it is useless to blame others, for God knows the truth, and we only increase our sin when we do so, and that it is useless to try to justify ourselves before, because before God we have all sinned and deserve death. And so here we stand today in front of the word of God, completely bare, exposed, that we have all sinned and deserve death. Fortunately for us and for Adam and Eve, the word also says that God the Father always finds his children. And today, he finds us here by his word that you are all found in Jesus Christ. That we no longer need to hide before God or to hide behind others, to hide from ourselves, to hide behind our accomplishments or lies or denial because God sees us and knows us and knowing exactly how we are and how hard we have fallen and how far we are from God's will for us, still God seeks us out. That in Jesus Christ, we have reconciliation that is rightness with God. And so we no longer need to be afraid of being punished. That instead we can trust in God. And instead of hiding in the bushes or hiding behind lies or others or blaming others or our accomplishments or trying to justify ourselves, instead we hide in Jesus Christ. That now, because Christ lives in you and you live in God, when a God the Father looks at you, God sees Jesus Christ, that you are safe in God and your life is hidden with God, that you already know that truth. And when Christ returns, Christ will appear to all. Today, through his word, Jesus is calling for us. Come out from where you have been hiding and how you have been hiding. Come out, come to me, you who are weary. Give me your regrets and your guilt. Give me your pain and your sickness, and I will give you my life and my forgiveness. And so we discover the great joy and the great life that we have in God. How great the Father's love for us, how infinite God's mercy. If only we will come out of the bushes and instead, hide in God. Amen. <laughs>